Hi, I'm Cheyenne Wright, and this is another one of my How I Art Good videos. And today I'm going to talk about how I do the Engineer Monk pinstripes that you see in Girl Genius. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, why not go to patreon.com slash docarcane and ask me about my evil plan. Here's a page from Girl Genius. I've colored everything else in it and uh, just left the engineer robes. So one of the first steps is to break down the engineer robes into the different sections. I like to break down each layer into its own different shade of blue here. Uh, I want to break apart the robes from the collar, from the capes, from the hat, and so that I can easily select each one and work on it individually. This is a texture file for a basic engineer pinstripe pattern that I built in a, as a Photoshop document. And I use this as a texture layer when it comes time for building the engineer robes. Perfectly straight. And uh, then we get fancy. So I build uh, four folders one for each section of the monk robes. More if I have more uh, several monks overlapping each other, but in this page all you're going to see are the four folders. And there's one for robes, one for collars, one for capes, and one for arms. And that's the breakdown that I find to be the easiest to use. Capes. So robes, capes, collars, and arms. And uh, we move on. So now I select all the areas of the robes in the image and I create a layer mask on the robes folder. Now any image that I drop into the robes folder um, is only visible in the areas where it lines up with the robes in the picture. This allows me to arrange the pinstripe, the base pinstripe pattern and have it only show through in the areas I wanted to show through. Once I have the robes folder set up with the layer mask, I go through and make layer masks for all the other shapes, for the collars, for the capes, for the arms, etc. All right, so what I do now is I make a rectangular selection of my pinstripe pattern, copy it, and now I have saved in my clipboard a, a pattern that I can just uh, control V paste in to Photoshop of the pinstripe pattern. I go to the robes layer, paste it in, and then use, using the transform command with control T, I, I rotate the, uh, the pattern and resize it so it fits uh, inside the, uh, the dimensions of the actual robes that we can see and so that it's the right uh, size scale. You know, it's the, the pinstripes are the right width based on how large the character is in the frame. And I quickly go through and add this pinstripe pattern to every section in the robes folder there, where I want it to be. Here it's not quite wide enough uh, at the scale I want it to be, so I have to make a second copy of it. And uh, I zoom in here to make sure that the pattern lines up right. And there, once it fills the frame, I can move on and do the rest. The hat here is tricky because it's part of the robes layer, but I want those lines going at a slightly different angle than the robes beneath it, so I have to make it its own separate selection, transform it, and because this hat is at an unusual shape, it's not straight up and down because of the angle of the head, I uh, use the corner controls um, to distort the, those pinstripes just a little bit, bring the bottoms in and the top out a little bit so that the lines follow the, uh, the angle of the hat a little bit better. Now I go through and do the next and do the same thing for each of the other layers for the collars. Hmm. 
same sort of distortion wherever I want it to uh, to make the angle look right. I do it again for the capes. And all angling things here is not the final step for making the pinstripes look right, but it's uh, it makes it a lot easier when I make the angles here than trying to do it again later. This video is uh, not in real time. This is sped up five times normal speed. Here I'm doing the brim of the hat for the, the bear and then the top of the hat, which is all part of that same folder. And using the transform tool, um, control, and clicking the, uh, the corners allows me to just freehand distort the, uh, the image quickly. And speed is, of course, you know, very important in this line of work. Like I said, um, when you're coloring a page, time is money. And the faster you can do a page, the better your hourly rate, so to speak. Okay, so I have all the robe patterns laid in. And now I select one section of one robe. And I go into a special filter called Liquify. Now, the neat thing about Liquify is it allows you to use your uh, pen brush as a sort of um, to push and pull and slide and smear textures around. The bad thing is that when you just use it normally, it looks, it shows you these ghosted layers, uh, kind of combining what you're working on with what the file on as a whole looks like. And it can be very confusing when you're trying to do uh, make a pattern look right because you're seeing this, the old patterns position and the new position that you're making overlapping each other. And that's not good for what we need to do here. We just want to see the pattern that we've changed, not what it used to be. So... Since the ghosting shows you the pattern you're working on and what you would see if you were looking at the whole page, what we need to do is make the whole page look obscured. And the easy way to do that is just turning on the line art. And what you get instead is just this big white field of white paper and pencils and a ghostly image of the pattern that you're working on overlaid on it, which is perfect for what we need. So I go through and make the selections. And when I go into liquify, all of a sudden the pattern appears. And I can smush it around, push it, pull it, slide it, snap it. Just using the, uh, the liquify push, the little finger button tool here. And then here, you know, here's an example of what it looks like when you uh, turn those that line layer off. Go back in here. Push it around and you know, create little rolls here at the bottom of a hem. You know, just looking for the way the fabric folds and rolls under its own weight, distorting the pinstripe pattern. Select an arm, just kind of push and pull and smush things around here, creating that just natural flow and weave of the pinstripe pattern that makes them look so good. All right, now that I have done that liquify stage, I go through, I select all the folders, and then using uh, Control E, I just merge all of my selected areas down into one layer. And this gets rid of all the layer masks and just kind of makes and trims everything down to just what I want to be seen. Um, so now I have a layer of the pinstripes and they're all uh, distorted and in, into the, uh, the folds and the flows of the fabric. And we're about halfway done now. So the next stage is the coloring, where I start adding in 
light and shadow. So the first thing I want to do is take the layer that um, that I'm going to be using, that I'm going to be painting on, and make a copy of it. I want to make a backup of this of this uh, pinstripe pattern, um, so that in case I mess up, I can go back to the backup and use that. And also, it'll become very important for you know uh, the final touches at the very end. So I, once I make a backup, I go into the original. I turn the opacity on the original down a little bit, down to about 70% so that I can see the blue robes that are underneath. And uh, because I want the uh, I want the blue pinstripes on this uh, to be, uh, I want the white in the blue pinstripes on this to be a little bit darker than pure white when I start the work. You know, I don't want anything to be pure white or anything to be pure black. Um, Knocking it down about 70% allows some of the blue of the robes to sort of contaminate the white pinstripe. And we'll fix that, at, you know, later at the end. Um, but this creates a nice sort of pale blue, dark blue effect. And then once I, I turn that down, I then merge those two layers and I begin painting in my shadows. Using just a, a dark blue in my airbrush, with my airbrush set to multiply, I just paint in the general indication of where the light, where the shadows fall on the characters based on the lighting of the rest of the scene. And then I go in and I start, and I make, start making selections of darker shadows uh, in the folds where uh, layers of the robe overlap each other. Uh, the cast shadows, the darker shadows that you'll get on a figure. Um, I want to accentuate the folds and the ripples here. Now, using a pale blue, I start painting in, I do the same in reverse. I start painting in the highlights, the parts where the light is hitting the, the engineer robes. Um, this will create the, and the high points of the, uh, the folds, creating a more dimension and uh, making it look more real. This also helps, you know, uh, and then selecting some of the light from the forge or from the, uh, the engines here. Uh, the, I start painting in yellow onto the, uh, the areas that are facing it and then pale blue into the areas that are facing away from it and rim light. You know, I don't want the, Again, I don't want darkest dark dark on the in the back there. I want to I want to help pop out the figure from his background by adding a little bit of blue rim light. So there we go. We now have we now have the basic uh lights and shadows added into the uh the engineer robes. And I could call it done here. But in the process of doing adding in this light and shadows, we lose some of the detail in the pinstripes. They, uh, the difference between the darkest area of the stripe and the lightest areas of the stripe, uh, where the, the forge is hitting it, uh, are, are pretty indistinct now. And uh, while that's not necessarily a bad thing, I want to bring back some of the detail of the darks and the lights. Um, I don't want to go back through and hand paint all those, each one of those stripes, but this is where that backup of the pinstripes comes in. I turn on the backup pinstripe layer, set its blend mode to overlay. And what overlay does is it looks at the file that you're setting to overlay and anything that's white becomes, uh, will brighten the areas beneath it. And anything that's dark will darken the areas beneath it. So a mid-tone will pretty much do nothing in uh, overlay, but uh, whites and dark blues will darken and lighten the area appropriately. And when I set that matching pattern to uh, overlay over the colored layer of the robes, it creates a very dramatic brightening and darkening of the engineer pattern. Perhaps a little too dramatic, in fact, because I like to turn it down from its full strength down to about 30% transparency. 
just enough to sharpen up those pinstripes and bring all the detail back in. And there you go. That's the big mystery of how I do those amazing pinstripes from the Engineer Monks in Girl Genius. My name is Cheyenne Wright. You can see more videos like this at patreon.com slash docarcane. You can read Girl Genius every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at girlgeniusonline.com. <laughs>